We got the E-Flight Draco 2 meter and this thing is super sweet. Come join our Discord server and chat with us about it. As always, links are in the description. Check it out guys, we have the E-Flight Draco. Horizon Hobby sent this to us as part of a, an ongoing collaboration we've got going with them. Uh, we told you guys we would always be up front with you and tell you what's going on. We have started to work a little bit closer with Horizon. There's some cool stuff we're gonna be showing off in the future. This is the start of that and it's awesome. I just flew it off camera, well, not off camera, on camera with Tony back on camera. Say hi, man. What's going on? Yeah, a little hand in there. Uh, it's been a while since we had him back. There's some big news coming with Tony too. We're gonna show that off one of these days. Not quite ready to do that, but we will really soon. Uh, this thing, however, super cool. It's like a timber, doesn't roll as fast, but man, does this thing get off the ground in, in this, uh, even in a light headwind, even full flaps, it doesn't matter. You can take this thing off in like a foot. It's insanely good. Giant ironing boards for wings, insanely good scale details. There's lights all over it. These uh, shocks are like really like best in class. They, they definitely upgraded the landing gear since you know the first release from what I've heard. Uh, overall, the servos are really good too. I don't even feel compelled to change them out. They're actually really good these days. Uh, Horizon's been listening to feedback. I think they've been watching my channel a little bit because they've been seeing that, hey, you know, maybe the servos could be a little bit better and they definitely are now. So I like what I see. Um, this thing runs an AR637T, which is actually buried underneath this little uh, window here in the back. There's a I'm trying to hold the plane from being blown away in the wind. Here we go, turn it sideways. It's a little uh, false floor in the bottom here behind uh, Mike Patey there. And you can pull that out and play with it. Uh, we are gonna put a GPS into it and we're gonna have the GPS overlay so you guys can see how this thing is flying, how fast it's going, what speeds it lands at, what speeds it takes off at. Of course, it, not much of a challenge there because it takes off in almost no time at all. But it, you'll at least see the speeds for yourself. Uh, let's go ahead and get it on the ground and we'll cut right to it. We're gonna do this vid a little different and start off with the second flight first, then cut to the first flight, then on to the review in the B-roll flight characteristics section. All right, we have a 4,000 spectrum pack in here now. Should be a little bit easier on the center of gravity, make it a bit easier to hover rather than on the 5,000 pack. It should also tumble a bit better. Love this thing, man. It's like a timber, but just bigger. And who doesn't like timbers? Timbers are one of my favorite planes to fly. All right, get her up. Up. All right, let's test out our hovering. Oh yeah, yeah, that's where it should be already. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get that in some more. I want to do some other stuff with it, but man, the CG is where it should be right now. It's very agile. Uh, one of the things I love about these Spectrum 4000 packs, and I flew this one a lot in my uh, Yas 39 Griffin, is that it is very uh, very lightweight. So watch this. 22.1 volts. Does that a lot easier than the uh, other pack did. You know what? I'm almost tempted to believe this thing can knife edge spin. What do you think, Tony? Always worth trying once. Always worth trying once. Let's give it a shot. All the way up. Come on, Draco. Give me a KE spin, baby. Oh, oh. It does. I don't want to put it any further. It might actually disintegrate the airframe. But it does knife edge spin. And that's my favorite maneuver out of all the, the prop maneuvers that I can do. Like, you know, hammerheads are cool and all, but you know, you ever done a good knife edge spin? When you have, it's just a whole different league. Hey, there's a helicopter coming. So let's go ahead and uh, put it into a hover for the helicopter. Hover's just fine, man. Nine minutes. Takes a bit of, bit of work, but you can do it. I have to use a good chunk of the stick to make that work. That chopper is a lot higher than it seems, so we don't really have to worry about him. We're not anywhere close to his airspace. Let's try knife edge now with the CG further back. Oh yeah, the the uh, the issues with it pushing towards you, like you know, pulling like you'd have to push down on the stick before. It's not as pronounced now. I think it's uh, the CG being closer to the center of the wing is making a big difference in how that performs. So that's actually pretty good. Let's do it again. God, it's much more agile. The tail's got a lot more response to, 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 to it too. Look at that, much better knife edge. I'm barely pushing the stick forward now as opposed to last time. Woo, got a little out of hand right there. Push the stick too much. The, uh, the rudder is very responsive. So that's just something to be concerned with. You know, if you're not used to it, definitely fly in lower rates. Uh, I like to fly in high rates. That's just my thing. I do want to put it into a, another hover in front of us though. I kind of want to grab it out of the sky, but it's so heavy, I don't think I'd be able to without potentially running the risk of hurting myself. 23.5 volts. Mm 
I like how you can just do a hover turnaround. That's so cool, man. Let's go up and make it do a, uh, another tumble, vertical. No, that was getting too close to the trees. You guys can't see the trees, but they're very close to it. Uh, we'll do it in this direction instead. Vertical, three, two, one, inside sticks. God, that thing sounds angry. 22.2 volts. Yeah, no, this is this is solid performance. Like, yeah, the 5,000 packs are good. You can definitely do a lot of cool stuff with it, but the lighter you can get this plane, the better it's gonna fly. Uh, it's already a very heavy plane as is. Um, yeah, I have in the past mentioned that critical angle of attack increase, or it is more susceptible, let me rephrase that. You hit your critical angle of attack earlier at a like a higher airspeed when you have more wing loading. So generally speaking, if you can get that wing loading down by using a lighter battery pack, you can still maintain a, um, what do you call it? You can get closer to that critical angle of attack without stalling as easily. So as we've mentioned, or not mentioned in the past, but my buddy Kieran kind of called me out on it because he's a uh, he's an aeronautical engineer. He went to school for it and everything. Critical angle of attack is a function of the airfoil. It does not change no matter how much weight you put on the wing. It's always gonna stall at that angle. But if you lighten the load that you put into the wings, you can make it stall at a much lower airspeed at that same given angle of attack. So in easier to understand terms, what I'm trying to say is that making the plane lighter will make it stall less, you know, less brutally is a better way to put it. It's not going to drop a wing as easily. The, the stall will become more gentle. You can uh, you can do more with it. It's not it's not as big of a deal. But the more weight you carry on the wings, while you may get some more flight times out of it, you do drastically reduce the performance of the airframe. One of the reasons why this thing's flying as good as it is now is because it's a lighter weight model. So I can just take it up and throw it around. And I don't have to worry about it as much. I kind of want to KE spin again. What do you think, man? Do it again. Do it again. I freaking love that, dude. How many people have actually knife edge spun a Draco? I want to know that. It's not hard to do or nothing either. It'll do it stock. I mean, this is a stock configuration. So, and if I can do this, guys, you can do it too. Uh, all this is, is just practice and patience. I mean, it's just like any other skill. It's like when I used to be in art college and I was drawing a lot uh, for the classes I was taking, people would be like, how'd you get so good at drawing? Aren't, isn't that like a skill you're like, aren't you born with that? I'm like, no, dude, I had to like learn how to draw. I went to school to learn how to draw. Uh, it's not something that you just pick up unless you practice at it. Just like flying. Flying is a skill you have to constantly practice. The more you do it, the better you get. Check this out. I'm gonna stall it right in. Tougher landing, but still, those gear handle it just fine. Let's turn her around, make her take off again real quick. Full back elevator, full throttle. <laughs> I love that, man. It never gets old. I want to take this and like do some real flying with it, go to like different locations. Actually, I have an idea. It's probably a stupid idea, but I have an idea nonetheless. Tony, just stay right where you are. We're going to try a bush approach through that area right there. There we go. Come on, float in, baby. Look at that thing go. Super awesome. How much power do we have left? Ran out of power toward the end. That's cool. Let's go ahead and get her up for a nice gentle takeoff. Golly, this thing just lifts right up. It's very aerobatic. Uh, much more than people were uh, kind of giving it credit for, I think. I mean, look, look at this. Take it right back up. Put it into a snap roll at the very top of this climb. Okay, full back elevator, full rudder, contrary aileron. Look at that thing go. Full flat spin. Does knife edge passes. Does have a bit of coupling, so you have to push the nose forward, which is kind of counterintuitive for most knife edge passes, but that's not really a big deal. Airspeed, for whatever reason, is not picking up. Uh, that's cool though. We, we can we can still get it in a bit. Hopefully, it'll start deciding to pick up. Uh, man, look at this thing go. It is such a big plane. And that rudder is so effective. And the Spectrum Pack helps uh, with, you know, figuring out voltage telemetry and all that fun stuff too, because it is natively integrated into the smart ESC that this plane is running. So it's actually a pretty good pairing for it. Do love the way this thing flies. Uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of, you know, shoot some landings with it. 
I have my lights on my right slider. I do have a slight persistent roll to the right. I think I fixed it, there we go. Drop the flaps, come in. See if we can bring her in nice and slow in a bush style approach. There we go. Hold some rudder, slip it in. There we go, put her over the grass. Such a cool plane. Now the wind shifted direction. Let's go ahead and do a stall takeoff right over Tony. Or next to him anyway. I don't want to fly over his head. If this thing goes crazy, it's going to chop him up good. Here we go. <laughs> that has got some port, uh, some punch to it, man. If you want to really get this plane to turn, uh, definitely use rudder. You're going to have to fly this plane. Like see the adverse yaw, the nose keeps pointing into the opposite direction of the roll. But if you add rudder, you can get the plane to actually roll the way it's supposed to. So this is a pilot's plane. Definitely you're gonna wanna have some stick and rudder skills to fly this one. Uh, anybody can pretty much fly it if you're used to high wing planes. I'd say you have no problem with it, but you do need to be aware that it's gonna have to be flown in a very specific way. Like you're gonna have to use rudder. You could mix in some rudder with your aileron, but you know, that's not really flying the plane, although it's not a bad thing to do. It's just sometimes you're not gonna need as much rudder for certain things. Sometimes you're gonna need more, it just depends. Um, one of the maintenance trucks for the airport's coming by. So I'm letting him know he can uh, he can roll up. I'll just stay up here out of his way. He'll probably want to say something. Three minutes. He's a cool dude. Put him into a hover up, up there real quick. Put him into another hover. Use the clouds as kind of a backdrop. Look at it go. All right, pull the sticks. Such an awesome plane. I ain't gonna be bothered, I'm just, I'm just looking. Do your thing, man. Look, I want some of them damn dick. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually filming uh, content for my YouTube channel, though, real quick, if you don't mind. <laughs> you're good, man, you're good. All right, you just told me about such being happy. You're totally good, man. Good to see you again. Yes, sir. Yeah, the uh, airport groundskeeper guy is pretty cool, but I don't think he, he fully realizes that we're filming when we have the planes out. So, you know, sometimes he's got to gently let people know what's up. All right, now that he's moved on, we can go ahead and get a little lower. Look at how agile it is. Drop the flaps, bring it in with a little bit of a slip. Whoa, here we go. Flop it in. Nice headwind for this too. Let's taxi it by Tony. Plenty of power left for this 5,000 pack. We're going to switch out to the 4,000 pack. I want to see how fast we can get up. Almost zero airspeed for this, or ground speed. Wind's really kicking up. We only had a max of like six miles an hour today, so it tells you how much you can depend on weather forecasts, right? You got to really work that rudder sometimes when you're holding that nose into a high alpha like this. Not that you really should be doing a high alpha in a plane like this. It's not really designed for it, but you can do inverted high alpha. A little bit. Let's show you guys what else we can do. Go up, put it into a kind of a uh, tumble. Three, two, one, sticks over. I love the way high wing planes do that kind of stuff. They're very graceful. They kind of grab the air. Watch this one top left. Oh yeah. Draco, eat your heart out. Put it into a knife edge pass. Turn some rudder into this turn. There we go. Ooh, a lot, a lot of back elevator. Or front elevator, that is. There we go. Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. Takes a moment to get her stabilized. It's definitely a pilot's plane. You gotta really fly this thing for a lot of maneuvers. I still love doing the flat spins with it though. Let's see how low we can get it without being too crazy and risky with it. Pull over. 22.5 volts. Yeah, it had a very high descent rate there. I didn't want to push my luck too much. Dropping the flaps, bring it in with a little bit of slip. There we go. Look at that. Dropped to like how many feet? Such a good plane, man. Let's do a little pavement landing with it too, and then we'll switch to a 4000 pack and see what else we can get out of it. Full flaps. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's so heavy, but you wouldn't think that it is with how agile this thing is. Not in the roll axis, but just how it floats through the sky. All right, let's bring her around. Full flaps. Let's do a 
wheel landing, get them on the mains. Six minutes. It's got good suspension, but you don't want to smash the plane into the ground. Try to keep a nice, gentle approach to it. Nice and nice and gentle. Like that. Not like that, but like that. There we go. Once you can get it settled in and you compensate for the winds, then it looks pretty good. We'll do it next time without flaps. It's actually a lot easier to do mains landings, just wheel landings without the flaps in my experiences. Your airspeed may vary. Uh, you may prefer to do it with flaps. On windier days like this, I prefer to do it without. Full flaps generally just tends to make it kind of come to a stop and it's much harder to control it. This is much easier to control. There we go. Come on, baby. A little bouncy. There we go. So yeah, you gotta, it's counterintuitive when you're flying tail draggers, right? You have to actually use a bit of stick pressure on the nose. You have to push the nose into the ground, otherwise it's gonna tend to bounce like that. So just something to be aware of. Um, that wasn't me pretending that I know what I'm talking about. That is just kind of a fact when you're flying a tail dragger, you do need to keep the nose pushed into the ground. And I wasn't doing that, which is why it bounced. I'm not trying to save face there. That's just me saying, you know, saying I made, made mistakes. And everybody makes mistakes, nobody's perfect. As much as we wish it to be, aviation is not an exact science, and RC aviation is far from it. There we go. Oh. Yeah, when it when it uh, comes in like that, I think, didn't Pady's plane kind of do that ground loop that one time? Yeah, so it kind of has that same characteristic. It does want to loop on you, but it is a tail dragger, so... You want my score on this thing right now? Solid nine and a half out of 10. It may have been a lower score in the past when the plane had some issues that Horizon definitely fixed. They do listen, guys. I've talked to people at Horizon. They do care. They're awesome people. I love working with them. Um, this thing is just phenomenal finish. I mean, look at the, all the scale details. They even went into the point of putting these little handles right here that you would have like, kind of climbed into the plane with all the, the, the LEDs and the instrument panel light up. In the evening hours, it'd be a lot easier to see. Um, there's lights all over this plane, tons of scale features, an amazing scale prop. The, 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 the what do you call it? The turbine exhaust here looks fantastic. Look at this suspension this thing's got. They really did a number on this. I mean, look at it go. It's just like, woo! Tailwheel's got a probably the best tailwheel design I have ever seen on a foam aircraft. That is some serious stuff right there. Uh, overall, again, nine and a half out of 10 for me. Where could it be better? It's kind of hard to think. Uh, I wish I could get some more roll rate out of it. That's what I would like. But for what it is, you kind of have to just kind of accept that. So it's not going to be you like, you're not going to do drill bits through the sky with this thing. It'd be hilarious if you could. Because this plane's in real flight, you could modify it to make it do that, which would be the funniest thing. I did actually fly this in real flight. I did modify it in real flight to kind of be closer to how the I would expect the full scale would perform. So I put the center of gravity further back. I almost uh, hovered it hands off. It was so easy. Just like put my hands off the sticks, just watch it spin around in circles. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't that really hard to hover either, honestly. Uh, Lomchavok maneuvers that we were doing, super cool. The uh, flat spins, well, perfect. Knife edge spins though, I can't believe we did it with a, with a basically, well, I mean, Timbers can do it, why couldn't this one, right? And the, the giant stab, this is almost a full moving stabilator. The actual stabilizer portion of this elevator in the back is super tiny compared to that massive elevator surface. This is, this is a work of art. I know we're super late getting it, but Horizon did send it to us to review, and I'm really happy that they did because I'd always wanted to fly it, but the, the price point for me personally was a little on the higher side, but for the people who love Draco, it's not even not even worth talking about. They're just going to go get it, and a lot of them haven't yet and because they haven't seen this review, and hopefully they're going to be like, man, I want a knife edge spin this thing now. <laughs> I want to take it back up, but we do have to cut this. Uh, there is no setup video for this one. It's really simple. We did everything by the book and everything I did here was done stock with a Spectrum 4000 and 5000 pack. So it's super cool. I hope you guys get it. Links in the description if you want to support the channel. See you guys again next time. Let's hop right into flight characteristics. One of our favorite things to do with bush planes is drop them like a rock using a forward slip and then level out for a quick landing. Draco does not disappoint here. It'll slip all day long. All you need is some rudder and opposite aileron and you too can hear sink rate, sink rate, sink rate. It handles slips really well. The massive ironing boards for wings carry that heavy weight gracefully through the sky, much more gracefully than we managed to land here. 
It should be noted that these shocks and the gear setup are not just for show, they are actual suspension and help with rough field operations. This thing really can be flown almost anywhere, so long as you're not ramming the landing gear into rocks. We're pretty sure that isn't covered by the warranty, so you know, just don't do it. Yeah, oh boy, I'm ready. We set off on a quest to really hover this model and put it through its paces. We know that these high wing models excel at hovering, but a lot of people just don't show it off. Not everyone is a 3D pilot, and that's okay. We'll gladly demonstrate what they can do. This one holds a very nice hover with just a bit of back elevator pressure and the usual stick dance on the rudder. It hovers best for us on a 4000 Smart Pack, but you could use a 3200 if you want it to go lighter. Just expect it to not last as long. This is a powerful motor and it shoes through a battery when you're hovering it. One thing that stood out for us is the general ease of recovery Draco had on exiting a hover. Unlike other Horizon models like Timbers, it has a tendency to start flying again almost immediately once the nose drops. Timbers by comparison can take a few moments to start flying again, especially if the slats are installed. That's generally where you're going to get in trouble while hovering. The hover itself isn't too difficult, but maintaining it while it torque rolls and then exiting to controlled flight poses the true challenge. Seeking to increase the difficulty, we decided to do full flap takeoffs, mixed to elevator of course, and hover super low to see how it handled with the horizontal stabilizer and ground effect. It definitely hovered better down low than it did up high. Once you get comfortable with hovering it, you'll see what we mean. Making it even more challenging, we started hovering over the drainage ditch between the taxiway and the runway. Prop wash over the water never gets old. Unfortunately, when you push the limits, the limits sometimes push you back. We made a mistake here trying to recover from a bad hover entrance and landed on the left wing. <laughs> oh boy. The model took a big impact, but some Gorilla Glue for structure, CA glue for the windows, and red electrical tape fixed it up to almost brand new. It's a real tank. Look at this impact in slow-mo and you'll see what we mean. Mistakes happen to everyone, especially people who run YouTube channels. Crashing doesn't define who you are, unless you're that guy who has more money than sense and brute forces your way through the hobby instead of learning how to fly. EPO foam is easy to repair, and on models like Draco, red electrical tape is your best friend. You won't even notice it unless you're up close to the model. It is a flying machine after all, not a museum piece. If it wasn't meant to fly, it should stay in your house. Some Gorilla Glue and CA Glue brought Draco right back where it was with red electrical tape for additional strength and paint match repair. You'll see Draco flying again, but for now, see you next upload.